let me begin by wishing our hard-working teachers a happy Teachers' Day. Uh, mm. Today is uh, World Teachers' Day. And uh, if we can, English is not our mother language. If we Indeed. can speak English and if we can read, then we have the teacher to thank. True. So we celebrate our teachers this morning and we uh, particularly salute them for all their, their hard work. Uh, you know the, te the teacher I am uh, very fond of, uh, Professor Nana Jenopoku Ejiman. Indeed. So I extend uh, very warm regards to her. And indeed, all my teachers who taught me uh, right from uh, uh, KG all the way and all, all mm. of those who have taught us, uh, we, we, we celebrate them. Uh, teachers do a great deal of work. Uh, That's right. Often unrewarded here on earth. Mm. Uh, we hope that that will change. Uh, but we celebrate them uh, this morning. The National Cathedral Project is one of those projects that have entered the annals as the most scandalous, the most putrefying, the most offensive, and the most desecrating of the holy name of the Almighty. One will have thought that a project that is to glorify God will have begun on the basis of truth, of transparency, of integrity, and utmost cleanliness. Mm -hmm. That is not what happened. This is a project the president told us would not require state resources. He said that the taxpayers' money would not be put into this project. And yet, as we now know, it was a grand deception. He totally deceived the Ghanaian people, deceived the clergy, and even more sacrilegious, he deceived the Almighty. I had to intercept documents, as you now know, which revealed that on the blind side of Parliament, apparently copious amounts of taxpayer funds were being sunk into this project. As we now know, thanks to the work that the vote of Central Committee of Parliament did, we demanded a full account of the releases made from public funds, albeit without parliamentary approval. Mm -hmm. And it emerged that a colossal, a staggering $58.1 million. At the time, the exchange rate worked out to 339 million Ghana cities. If you bring, if you talk about $58 million today, mm -hmm. uh, you are approaching a billion cities. So $58.1 million, and this is just taxes. Mm. Our taxpayer funds used for the project. This does not include the donations that have come in from all over the world. You would have to add about $3.5 million mm. of donations. That is if they are accounting properly. Now, Alfred, it is important for me ab initio mm -hmm. to totally dispel so that. So 58.1 million dollars yeah, is what we have spent. Is That's what has been spent so far to dig that pit, which what is now described as the world's most expensive pit, which I'm told in recent times has been upgraded. Since Baumia started talking about an upgrade, it's been upgraded to a swimming pool. Uh, that's mm -hmm. this is that what is, you're talking about. That is, that is what we see, 58.1 million dollars. I mean, other countries, what they are doing with even $20 million, $30 million. And that is why when the venerable Bishop Dakewood Mills resigned in his resignation letter, he said that, look, he has built temples, magnificent temples, with far less that he, at the time, he thought that they had spent about $30 million. Mm -hmm. And he said that he could no longer take it, that he will be serving on a board where these huge sums of money will be spent on a project. And that is all you see, a hole, a very, very costly pit. Now, in doing this analysis, it is important for us to quickly dispel the notion that some auditors have cleared the National Cathedral Board of Trustees and the Secretariat. Well, that's the... 
communication that came through. Good. You yeah. see, you see, in this in this country, let's be very critical. Mm. Everybody is just swallowing hook, line, and sinker. The statement put out by the National Cathedral Secretariat, mm -hmm. signed by the chair of the board, Professor Apostle Opoku Onyina. Mm -hmm. We must state for the record that they did not attach the audit report. They did not attach, yes. Yes. So we seen Nobody it. has seen that 2020 audit. Nobody. We must state for the record. Deloitte did that audit. Yes. They must publish the audit, if indeed they believe that they have been cleared. So that's the first point I want to make. If you believe that you have been cleared, that no adverse finding has been made against you, please publish the full unredacted report. Let us have the full report. You remember the SML matter? There was a lot of hue and cry that we had to really struggle, file an RTI request and all of that until the president reluctantly released it. When it was released, we all discovered that apparently the executive summary which had been put out was largely distorted and had left out a lot of significant findings by the auditors. You recall? So we have seen that in this country, time without number. And you see, let us make it clear to public officials that when you have been given a mandate, when it has now turned out that this project, this uh, project we started as uh, the president's personal pledge, we are not going to use public resources. Now it is clear that we have used public resources, albeit illegally. You must know that it is the people's money. Every report, every audit, every matter is of public concern. So you do not put out your own interpretation. We all know you are an interested party in this matter. We all know that. You are an interested party. So you have to, as a matter of fact, to build public confidence, make sure that you are presenting this report to the public. So as it is now, let our viewers understand that government has not published this Deloitte audit. It is an interpretation being put out by the National Cathedral Board of Trustees. We need to emphasize that point. I see this was captured in, in, the, in the letter that was addressed to the heads of churches, of churches and, yes. and Christian leaders. At the, the date of this letter, which we have a copy of, is the 24th of September, 2024, signed by Apostle Professor Pokunina, Chair of the National Cathedral of Ghana Board, said it convened a meeting on, on the 20th of September, 2024, for Deloitte to brief church leaders in the country on the statutory audit report from the inception of the project to the period ending 31st December, 2020. So between 2020 and now, we, we, we don't have the details of the report, yes. at least the audit has yes. been conducted. So, so let us all agree that as we speak, nobody in the public, apart from those who are interested parties, who have a vested interest in this matter, who are claiming that they have been cleared. We haven't even heard from the auditors if the claim by the National Cathedral Secretary. And this is a, 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 a project where I will take statements from people who work there with a pinch of salt. But is this audit now, sufficient justification for this project to continue now, based on what you know? Brilliant question. That's where I'm coming to. The second fundamental point that I want to make. Let us also understand that this audit that they claim has cleared them is for only one fiscal year, 2020. They themselves, in that letter to church leaders, state that they are waiting for the 2021, 2022, and 2023 audits. They have said that. Mm -hmm. It forms part of an ongoing statutory audit. Exactly. By Deloitte. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, having all accepted that, 
that is not in controversy. All of us, including the National Cathedral officials, all admit, we all agree that 2021, 2022, and 2023 audits are outstanding. Let us therefore ask ourselves, what was audited in 2020? What is the financial breakdown in terms of the releases? Mm -hmm. Fortunately for us in Parliament, we asked the Finance Minister, when he appeared before the vote of Central Committee, to give us a detailed breakdown of the releases that he made. I have a copy of that letter here, dated 21st November 2022, signed by Patrick Nomo, Chief Director on behalf of the Minister for Finance, and it was ad addressed to the clerk, to the committee, the vote of censure committee. Mm -hmm. This is the breakdown that was provided in terms of releases for the National Cathedral Project. Mm. 7 June 2019, an amount of $89,000 was released. At the time, the, the, the exchange rate, it worked out to 445,000 Ghana cities. 5th March 2021 was the next release, according to the finance minister, mm -hmm. $13.9 million, which works out to $80.5 million. Now, it is important for you to take note of these timelines. Mm -hmm. The 2020 audit, when you do the financial analysis, it is an audit on just 0.13% of the releases. 0.13%. According to the finance minister himself, the document he presented to parliament on 21st November 2022, by 2020, there had been only one release of $89,000. We are talking mm -hmm. about a $58.1 million release. Mm -hmm. So 0.13%. That is what all of this razzmatazz we have been cleared is about 0.13%. So that's the, the release for that 2020 yes. fiscal year? Yes, 0.13%. Can you believe that? So sometimes you wonder what these people take us for. 0.13%. Let me read the full, the full, the full uh, breakdown. So by 2020, only one release, 89,000. 5th March 2021, $13.9 million. That's 88.5 million. 10th February 2021, $5.5 million, that's 32 million Ghana cities. 29th October 2021, according to the finance minister, mm -hmm. he released $25 million, that is $142.7 million. 19th August 2021, he released $10 million, that is 58.2 million Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. And then on 31st March 2022, $3.5 million was released, and that is 25 million Ghana cities. It all, he provides a total of 339 million, 3,064 Ghana cities, 86 pesos, working out to some $58.1 million at the time. So the substantial, the over 99% of our resources have not yet been audited. 2021, 2022, 2023, that's where 99 and more percent of our taxes were released. So nobody can say that because of some 0.13 percent audit, which we haven't seen, you have put your interpretation, you are refusing to publish it. So we should come along with you and that you are preparing to resume this project. And you see, the lack of respect for the Ghanaian people. Who has endorsed this project? If you look at our national priorities, and you see, that, le that, that leads me to another discovery I made this week. What's that? And look, I am so outraged, Alfred. Totally livid. Will you believe that this week, top national cathedral officials walked smiling all the way to their banks to receive their September salaries. And the documents have intercepted, copies of which I have here, from the IPPD, the Integrated Personnel Payroll Database. Since this project stalled, 
31 months ago, 31 months, these National Cathedral officials have been paid all the 31 months. Can you believe that? The, the period that the project has... Yes, for, the project has stalled for 31 months. Mm -hmm. And the tracking I have done, assessing the IPPD, our national payroll database, they have been paid throughout the 31 month period for no work done. Whilst that pit was abandoned, has become a swimming pool, causing national outrage. Top cathedral officials, and let me give you their names. Dr. Paulo Pokumensa, who is described here as the overseer of the national cathedral, throughout the period, with his assignment number or employment category number as 1249725 in the database. Process for payment, 30th September, just this week. Then you have... How much is that? So, so he picked up 29,838 Ghana cities. This week, on the 30th. And when you look at the database, I'll leave copies with you. They have been programmed in the system to be paid all the way to January next year. Can you believe that? They're supposed to receive their salaries to January. Yes, they'll receive in October, receive in November, receive in December, receive in January. I thank God that President Mahama is coming on, and, and, and after the December 7 election, we will stop all of this lutocracy going on. Hmm? Reverend Father Ebenezer Saka Ameyao, also described as a church relation manager at the National Cathedral Secretariat. Assignment number 1467567. Also process for payment 30th September. And the organization he's described as a political appointee. Yes, political appointee. So they are all political appointees. I see. Meanwhile, this is a project. They told us that they don't use public funds. On these three top officials alone, over the last few months of no work being done at the National Cathedral Secretary. They have received 2.2 million Ghana cities. When you do the analysis, you look into the database. 2.2 million Ghana cities. You have Madame Rebecca Lovia Matecho Yakbo, who is described as the program director, hmm. with an assignment number 1472910 in the database. Also processed for payment 30th September, 2024, received 20,721 Ghana cities. And you see, let the national context not be lost on you. This is a time that we are witnessing unprecedented labor agitations. I am glad that Professor Jampo is here. I have heard him. I've heard UTAG leaders. I've heard senior staff of our universities. Indeed, I have seen statements from our universities where they could not reopen. They have deferred reopening in a number of universities because of these agitations over unpaid wages, over, over government not giving them their due, what they deserve, what they have worked for. They are working on. They are lecturing. They are marking scripts. And you know the population in these are universities, these are institutions. CTAC, which held the longest strike, has served notice that they are going back to strike. Government has not been able to meet their demands. Today, we are celebrating teachers all over the world. The world, the UN, everybody is celebrating teachers. This is how Ga the Ghanaian government is treating teachers. They are all on strike. Not all of them have one issue or the other, one unresolved <clears throat> matter relating to their working conditions. Mortuary workers, can you believe that? How many are they, mortuary workers? There was crisis in this country a few days ago. They have only given government two weeks. They say that just PPEs, PPEs, personal protective equipment. So those who take care of us when we are alive, government is not taking good care of them. When we die too, those who take care of us, government is not taking good care of them. So all of these labor agitations, and then you have a government that is paying people for 31 good months for no work. We have all seen the pit, the world's most expensive pit, 58.1 million dollars. So what is going on in this country? You have 
They are Kufuado Baumia leadership. <clears throat> that simply doesn't listen. Look at the uproar. When Ghanaians discovered that, ah, $58.1 million. I mean, institutions, look at what our vice chancellors are building, even with $10 million, with $5 million. See what they are building. I mean, recall some of the hospitals, Shai Osudoku Hospital, mm -hmm. see, first class hospital. How much did, did President Mahama use for that? So, with $58 million, mm -hmm. you can get so much. I mean, look, in terms of our infrastructure deficit. So, after all of this outreach, mm, in 31 good months, you are still paying these people. And in the system, you have programmed to keep paying them to general. It's like, we don't care. I mean, there is no, no, no sensitivity, no modicum of respect for the Ghanaian people. Look, these are officials that and reverend ministers who we all respect as christians we have been taught touch not the anointed we are not anointed so we all revere them we fear them we won't touch them but you see some of the members of the board of trustees i recall when we were in power the ndc under president mahama i'm referring specifically to the respected former vociferous Presbyterian moderator, Reverend Marty. You remember him? He was so vociferous. His famous statements. You remember he used the airport before President Muhammad did the airport, you know, uh, rehabilitation, which has become an award-winning international airport. He screamed in an interview. Nyansafway, Moa, eh? Yeah, airport, no? I had to say, crazy for airport. He was critical. He was speaking against corruption, speaking against wastage, against bad leadership. Reverend Emmanuel Mate. And we all mm -hmm. listened to him and said that, look, we need more and more leaders of moral society to be vocal. So mm. even though he was very critical, nobody attacked him. We gave him his due. I am shocked that he is silent and he is part of the members of the board of trustees and allowing all of this to go on. What would Reverend Mate have said if the NDC was in power? Dissipating scarce tax resources on this scale, well, I say he's over $58 million, dollars, and then for 31 months of no work being done. Remember that I intercepted Ribade's letter to their workers mm -hmm. and those who need a refreshing of memory. Ribade is the consortium put together of Rizani the Ekta, Babi Soti, and Di Simone. These three companies, Italian giants, mm -hmm. put together to construct this cathedral. They serve notice on the 14th of March to their staff, all the workers, 14th of March 2022, mm. that government is not paying us. Can you believe that? That is even scandalous in itself. That after all of these withdrawals, $58.1 million, mm. the project contractor said that, still old. said that we are still old, we are not being paid, so all of you go home. But they asked all their staff, all the workers to go home. So since March, 2022, 31 months. No work is being done, and yet people are being paid. How far are you willing to, to go to get answers and accountability to this and the justification or, or otherwise of these payments we are seeing? Very far, as you are aware, I have stopped at nothing. There is no avenue I haven't been to. I am a shraj, as you do know, with portions of this National Cathedral scandal. I am in court with portions of this in the series of Reverend Kusi Boatin, Kwabna Edu Jemfi. Uh, he has lost three rounds already. That double identity, you know, criminal scam which was taking place. And I'm surprised that in the face of all these criminal scams, which 
the court of Ghana, the Human Rights Court, has determined clearly hmm. the Justice Chawe Court determined clearly that there was criminality in the conduct of Reverend Victor Kusibuati, Kwabna Edu Jenfi. And the National Cathedral Secretary wants to tell us that all of this they have been heard and they have been cleared, given a clean bill of health. So we have the court's options mm -hmm. where, where we are there at that forum. Then in Parliament, there are several processes. You are aware that we filed a motion. The Honorable Atufos, the Honorable Bua Reverend Toso, myself, Honorable Agboja, and I think Honorable Sosu, the Speaker duly admitted that motion for a debate which we have held. And at the end of the debate, the consensus was that there should be a probe by Parliament. That has stalled because our colleagues on the MPP side have failed to present their members. I see. To, so that we can have that parliamentary probe into the National Cathedral. But even though they have engaged in a lot of this stonewalling, mm -hmm. we continue to raise the issues in Parliament. I remember that we have filed a number of urgent questions, despite their stonewalling, on, and that is how come recently uh, all of these figures were affirmed on the floor in terms of the, the, the illegal mm -hmm. withdrawals, we have also filed questions which have now determined that about $3.5 million in donor funds came in. And normally we don't even add that to the $58.1 million. Mm -hmm. And then remember that it has also been confirmed that in addition to the $58.1 million, we are going to spend so much as a country to compensate the victims of demolitions that took place. Some way, somehow, when the president allegedly spoke to God, as he claims, God also gave him the coordinates, mm, the specific mm. location where he should put up this project. And so everything in the way had to be demolished. As we speak, as we speak, the Ghanaian government must compensate the Malians. The Malian ambassador's residence was demolished. As we speak, scholarship secretariat has to be replaced. You know the cost of that. The Judicial Training Institute has to be replaced. The Chief Justice is looking for $50 million. To build a new one. To build a new one. Can you believe that? A, a building that nothing was wrong with it. Solid structural integrity. We need $50 million. Talk to the Chief Justice. The last time I intercepted their request to various banks, including the World Bank, they are looking for $50 million. Then don't forget the judges' bungalows. Already we've spent millions housing them temporarily at places I don't have to mention. We need to protect our judges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we are building new bungalows for the judges at extra cost. It's not part of the $58.1 million. And then don't forget that the passport head office was also demolished. We have spent 10 million Ghana cities. We don't add that to the $58.1 million. We have spent 10 million Ghana cities to build a new one for them near GIJ, mm -hmm. now Unimac. Mm -hmm. That is not all. I'm not done with the list. Then we have bungalows belonging to Shraj. Shraj, deputy commissioner, they are bungalows. Where well, the National Cathedral site? Site demolished. They are now spending, the last time I tracked, they spent millions on rent for their top officials whose bungalows were demolished. We don't add that to the $58.1 million. I am not done. Private property owners, Comsys IT firm, their headquarters, demolished. They are owed compensation. Then there is Waterstone Realty Apartment Complex, another private company, Waterstone Realty. As for them, they, they say they have had enough of the Dilly Dallin rigmarole. They've had enough. So they are at the high court seeking full compensation, about $6 million. So look, by the time we are done with this national cathedral disaster that President Akufuado has brought upon us, and that's why I agree with Professor Jampo, 
who said weeks ago that people have to answer. People have to go to jail for this. And you see, look, you cannot do this to a bankrupt country, an insolvent country, a country that cannot pay its workers, who are agitating all over the place. And then they look at us in the face and say that, oh, some audit on 0.13% of releases. So we are preparing to resume work. Resume work with whose money? Who has given you the approval? The last time, after we caught them, and they decided to do the right thing, and put 80 million in the budget. All of us, MPP and DC MPs, even MPP MPs were embarrassed to associate with this project. We all said, no, 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 this one we won't approve. We don't know what our constituents will do to us when we go back. So it was not approved. So they don't have parliamentary approval to use our resources. So on what basis are these reverend ministers telling us that they are preparing to resume. Resume with whose money? Remember the... the with the, what the, approval? The, the what, con what constitutional mandate? The contingency fund was the avenue for... Again, uh, that was also unconstitutional. Look, if you read the PFMA, contingency projects are defined. A contingency is something that you don't foresee. You could not predict, you know, some happenstance. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say that this project comes under contingency. Something that you say that you had a vision with God, that you are putting in place secretariat, you have appointed board of trustees, you have called your crony architects. Remember Bishop Dakiwad Mill's letter that President Kufado told them that when it comes to choice of architect, they don't have a say. Choice of venue, mm, they don't have a say. He has already decided. In flagrant violation of our procurement laws. And don't forget that when I did an RTI to the Public Procurement Authority, they said that, look, please, honorable, leave us out of this. We, have, we are not part of this project. Mm. So how on earth, mm, in the face of all of this, does anybody tell us that they are preparing to resume. On what basis? Look, no respect for the Ghanaian people. And that is why, look, as December 7 approaches, I will mean no worse that for accountability's sake, to reset Ghana, to stop this impunity, and to make sure people pay for their crimes against the suffering Ghanaian people, we ought to vote for President John Dramani Mahama and Professor Nana Jinopokwaja. I mean, for accountability's sake. Look, this, this is total madness, and it cannot be allowed to continue. 